by request a project to use a blue LED. In this case, it's going to be a blue flickering LED. Let me just demonstrate that right now by sticking it across here. So it's a blue candle style LED that just flickers up and down in intensity automatically. I just thought that would be a novel twist, but it's a blue LED potted into the glow in the dark resin. So I'm going to use this mold and it's a mold again for a pendant, I guess, but it's interesting because it's shaped like a little uh, obelisk. So I'm going to use a two part resin. I'm going to mix in this uh, LED glow in the dark photoluminescent pigment powder. Uh, you'll notice that I'm featuring a lot of items by Ellie Glow. I'd just like to say they're not a sponsor, it's just that I'm, I've taken a shine to their products quite literally because it seems to be very good quality uh, strontium illuminate glow in the dark powder. These pebbles are also from Ellie Glow and that's part of the inspiration behind this project is the fact that I've got a little drizzle of the resin I've made previously that whatever I had left I just poured out onto a mat just to actually get a little pebble. And this one has a lot more pigment, and this one has less pigment. Now, if it's got too much pigment, it makes it fairly opaque to the LED. It doesn't uh, diffuse through, particularly in something like this, it's not going to diffuse through as well. And you're just going to get a little hot spot at the top. But by making it more diffuse, it won't be as bright, but it will actually, the LED will penetrate deeper. So I'm going to take the exposure off, and I'm going to show you what these pebbles look like for the inspiration. So you can see that this one here, isn't as bright, but that is more diffused. And this one is this fully loaded one. And the pebbles are actually really good. These are really impressive. You get a pack of 12 and the light's coming back. Just watch your eyes. You get a pack of 12 and you get four of the green ones. I chose the green ones because they're the brightest for this video. Uh, but you also get four blue and you get four the cobalt blue, as they call it, and aquamarine blue, which is a sort of turquoisey green and blue pigment. And by far the green is the brightest, but the other ones are nice. In a dark room, they're nice. Uh, they're perfectly visible at night. <laughs> Interesting to note that the these have clearly been poured long ways. So they've been, there's a, here's the fill point, and they've got an interesting texture. Uh, that looks as though they've put in chopped strand, fiberglass strand, as commonly used in the prop industry. In fact, the the pods on Intergalactic Kitchen were slush, a slush of resin and chopped strand, and just rolled about inside a mould uh, to actually rotary casting. Ultimately, I believe that's called, but done manually just to coat the inside and create a fairly solid structure. Resin in its own is quite brittle, but when you add the fiberglass, it bonds it together. In this instance, it gives it a great texture. These look like pebbles. They feel like pebbles. They're nice. They're they're really nice. This sounds like an advert for Ellie Glow. It's not an advert for Ellie Glow. It's just, it's just quite a nice thing. So what I'm going to do, I've got the resin warming because it's uh, quite cold here. It's not that cold, uh, but it makes it cure faster. And I'm going to use two of these little scoops uh, and make up the resin that I'm going to pour into this. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in a helping hand and I'm going to put the LED in it facing down. Not sure what height I'm going to put it yet. And the reason for that is that I'm going to have to pour the resin into this and then I'm going to have to sit the LED into it and hopefully get it fairly central. We shall find out. It's all a matter of trial and error. So here is the mixing cup. I've not managed to open this packet yet. Just bear with me here. This is a brand new packet. Here is the little drug spoon that came with one of those foot therapy things. So I'm going to put two scoops in. I don't know if that's super much. I don't think it's, yeah, I've overdone it now, haven't I? That's fine. And I've spilled it in the bench again. Fortunately, uh, fortunately, Ellie Glow is harmless, non-toxic, non-radioactive, non-hazardous, and not restricted for air, road, sea, transport, MSDS available on request. Ellie Glow pigments will release light for up to 10 hours in darkness and charge up in minutes. So it's a fairly inert material. Let's get the resin in. So here is my resin. The resin, it's the last bit of, I've only got one go at this because this is the last of my resin. Hopefully it's going to be enough from Poundland. Why do I use resin from Poundland? It's because, well, it just makes sense. It's, I could spend five pounds on the same thing of Araldite or I could go to Poundland and I could get it for a pound. And then you can do lots more because it's cheap. 
So I've squirted the two parts in and I'm going to mix it with another coffee stir that has been clearly stolen from Conrad's Coffee Shop in Ramsey in the Isle of Man. Conrad's, which is owned by Connor Cummins, I mentioned this before, is a TT racer, a famous TT racer. Is that a notorious TT racer? If you look up the accidents uh, videos, uh, Connor has the undesirable distinction of having one of the most spectacular accidents when he came off his bike in the veranda on the mountain road and was catapulted for a considerable distance over fields and uh, flipping head over heels and just narrowly missing stone walls. It was horrific. He's largely made of metal inside. And Connor is not small. Connor's about the same height as me. Let's pour this in. He's unusually tall for a TT rider, but he is a successful TT rider. Oh, it turns out that this is absolutely tons of resin. I was wondering if I was going to be able to fill this mould. I am. I'm going to take it right up to just short of the top. This is working so well so far. What could go wrong? Lots could go wrong. So now I'm going to adjust this then. I'm going to put my LED vertically. Oop. And then I'm going to lower that down a tad. You're not seeing this because you're just seeing it from the wrong angle. You're seeing it from above. And then I'm going to place this in like that and let the resin flow around it. And then because watching resin cure is not particularly entertaining, I'm going to pause momentarily and I shall be back, literally, in a moment. Some considerable time later, because I've spent a very enjoyable evening having a little tipple, because it's the weekend, and watching various music videos, including Sam Sparrow Black and Gold, which is a really retro but really great electronic track, uh, and more recently, Pinao Go Bang. I shall provide links to both those down below. They're really good tracks. The, particularly, if you look at the Pinao Go Bang one, Look at the work they put into that video, particularly with the ultraviolet. Well, the wig, basically. It's huge. And the, the evening ended up, let's uh, see how this well comes out. The evening ended up with uh, looking at the old Spectral Magic Parade at Disney. Fantastic. Uh, the amount of work. You look at the modern illuminated parades at Disney, like Paint the Night, and they're completely different. They look fantastic, but the technology is absolutely different. Whereas uh, on the old uh, Spectral Magic Parade, it was dedicated circuit boards and one wire per lamp. It was really complex. Uh, the new ones, they have like WS2812B addressable LEDs, but they make up for that by putting really complex software to actually really chase and create complex colour patterns. Very, It's very different technology. I've got a certain fondness for Spectral Magic because I wrote some of the software for it and designed some of the circuit boards. Now, this uh, mould, the resin has cured. I also poured out the residue onto this. Uh, if you pour resin onto polythene, it won't stick to it. So I made another little pebble out of that. And you can look at this compared to the other ones and put them into the correct order here. It's super concentrated, medium concentrated, and have actually been quite light, even lighter than these pebbles with that, I think. Let's see how we can get this out because uh, I'm not sure how to get this out. Because uh, the silicon, although it doesn't stick to the resin, it does, uh, there is a certain difficulty in getting it out due to uh, the closeness of the fit and air pressure and stuff like that. I may have to try and peel it back. I'm not sure how well it's going to hold up to that. This is a, this is going to be the tricky bit. I'm pretty sure I've already moulded something resin in this and it was hard to get out. I'm going to try and turn it inside out. That may be the best bet because it is silicon. It should withstand it. Although I'd want to get multiple uses out of one mould. That is really proving tough. I may have to pause if I can't get this out in the near future because uh, this is proving really quite difficult to get out. It is kind of going inside out. It is kind of coming out. Or maybe not. Yeah, this is a uh, this is proving to be the hardest bit. I wonder what the best method of doing this is. In the Commercial resin mouldings, the fiberglass industry, they'd have a compressed airline point in, but I'm not sure you'd put it into something like this. And that would effectively create an air cushion and allow something like that to be pulled out easily. But it is coming out. There we go. We have our obelisk. 
I shall just uh, flip this mould back into the correct shape so it doesn't decide to take a new form. There we go. It looks quite smart. No obvious... Well, there's a wee bubble. No obvious imperfections on that. Right. Let's try pounding it up. Because this does contain a blue candle flicker LED, so I can just theoretically jam a 2032 across this. And I'm seeing a prominent blue glow in the middle. Right, okay. So let's put this down here and uh, turn the light off. I'll take the exposure off and we'll see how it looks. So that is charged up with the lights. I'm not sure how the blue is affecting it. Oh, actually, there is a strong hint round about the blue LED, but the blue LED is overpowering the glow. But it looks quite good nonetheless. It looks quite deep and sinister and flickery with quite... The camera is showing quite a strong blue halo around that. I'm not getting that here. I'm getting more sort of turquoisey halo because the blue has been converted to green by the phosphor here. Uh, look at the little uh, slugs, the pebbles. That is the brightest one. This one isn't too bad, actually, compared to that one. This one, you know, the amount of resin I put in isn't too bad. Yeah, that's interesting. Someone suggested that you could uh, possibly just pulse the LED every so often just to charge it up and then the crystal round your neck would just glow like this and just every so often it would just put a wee burst of light into it just to reactivate it. I'm sure that's that's actually viable. Yeah, it's pretty good. It looks quite neat and it is actually glowing along the full length. But how much of that is down to the fact it was exposed to the overhead bench lights versus the LED inside? But I'm going to be, uh, bring the light back now. I'm going to turn the light back on. Just watch your eyes. Uh, it's going to be very bright. Oh, super bright. Um, and let's uh, just actually focus down onto there and just tame that down a bit. Yeah, there we go. <coughs> so here it is. The LED is encapsulated and it creates quite, a, shall we say, a blue hot spot at the top with the diffusion through the glow-in-the-dark pigment. And it looks all right. Now I'm wondering, you know, what I could have done with this. I could have drilled a hole in these and then embedded an LED inside them and made this sort of continually powered glow-in-the-dark pebble. But that's an option. That's something we may try in the future. At this point in time, this is what we have. We have our glow-in-the-dark obelisk with that flickering LED in it that just self flickers at its own rate and just puts a gentle glow that is kind of invisible until I turn off the overhead light and then it becomes super visible again. It looks pretty good, doesn't it? It's quite smart. Um, there's not much more to say, is there? That, that is fundamentally it. That's what we're getting. We're getting that glowing green obelisk that is powered with that LED inside it. Looks pretty good. I like that. Good result.